So one of the subjects in Earth science is the what we call the hydrosphere, which is all of the water basically on the Earth um, and the ways in which it interacts and behaves. You've probably heard of the water cycle, of course. Uh, it's things like that. One of the most important parts, especially with uh, regards to things like climate change, is the ocean conveyor, or to give it its fancy name, thermohaline circulation. Uh, but this is basically um, one current that circles the entire globe through all of the oceans, and it's how heat is moved around the planet, um, which gives us climate and weather and all sorts of other fun things like that. So, today, we are going to be performing uh, an experiment to look at what it is that actually moves the ocean conveyor and if it's heat or density that uh, is more powerful. So the first driver is heat. Um, water around the equator and at the surface of the sea obviously is warmer and hotter, so does that heat then push? Um, the conveyor around the planet. So here we've set up the first experiment. Uh, we've got warm water on this side and cold water on this side, which we've put food colouring in, so you can tell the difference. Uh, and just to show you that we definitely have a temperature difference, uh, over on this one, if we stick in the temperature rod, that one is about 41.2 degrees, uh, whereas over on this side, it's a mere 22.9 instead. So there's definitely a temperature difference between the two. So, having filled the tanks, uh, we can now open the valves uh, in between the two. What this means is those two tanks of water now can actually move between the adjoining parts. So we should slowly start to see water from this side move over here and water from this side move over here. If our hypothesis is right, because warm water rises, we should end up seeing that this top half will turn red and the bottom half over here will turn blue, which seems to be happening. So it's worked. Uh, as you can see, we've got the warmer water up here and the colder water down here. They aren't mixing yet because there's no current or anything in the tank to mix the two. So at the minute, there's a sort of barrier that you can see between them, which we call a thermocline. Uh, now, we can, in fact, show the temperature gradient as well using these. They're very clever. The sensor is just at the end of the rod there. Um, so if I can show you here, up at the top, you can see immediately it's given me the warm water again, the 40 degrees, but as I slowly move down, you can see how the temperature is dropping. Then when I hit that thermocline, there's a rapid drop then, down to 27, and that gets colder and colder the lower down I go in the water column. So uh, for this one, we are going to be doing fresh water um, versus salt water, cold fresh water versus cold salt water. Um, we're just going to sort of roughly add salt here. In the sea, it would be uh, about 30 grams uh, per litre, um, but we're, we're estimating for this one. There we go. And we're going to add some food colouring again to make it more visible and obvious what's happening. Now, in theory, the salt water is denser than the fresh water um, because of the salt content. Um, so, because of that, it's therefore heavier to uh, use the common parlance, so this one will sink more. So we're expecting the fresh water to end up sitting on top of the salt water. So, again, we open up the valves. The two can now move easily between each other. Let's see what happens. So hypothesis correct again, we're on a roll. Um, we f find that, yeah, this fresh water up here um, has settled on top of the denser salt water, uh, which has, of course, sunk because of its density. Um, one way that you can also test that, obviously, we saw the salt going in, so we absolutely know which one of these is the salty one and which is the fresh. Uh, but if you want to test that much the same way as you would test the uh, temperature with a thermometer, um, you can test, in this case, uh, by looking for conductivity in the water, how conductive is that water, um, how much electricity can pass through it, and so on and so forth. Um, in, the ca in this case, uh, fresh water is less conductive than salt water. The salt water will increase its conductivity, so you can test that. At this stage, it, much like the temperature though, we've got a pronounced cline again. In this case, it's a halocline. Fresh water on top, salt water underneath.
So we now know that heat at the equator is driving the conveyor and we know that fresh water like from estuaries and river mouths emptying out into the sea and things like that are also going to be drivers. But what about glacial melt water? That is cold water at the Arctic, the Antarctic, places like that, that is also fresh, fresh and cold. So is that going to sink because it's cold or is it going to float because it's fresh? Which of those things is more important? So the final experiment that we've set up, uh, over in this tank we have cold fresh water and in this tank we have warm salty water. So in theory whether this one floats or sinks tells us whether it's heat or salinity or density which is more important. Uh, we can of course demonstrate again um, the difference. So here we go, in this tank uh, the temperature is currently 52 degrees um, whereas over in this one we're down to 23 degrees. So it's almost twice as warm in the red tank as it is in the blue. So, as we did before, let's open up the valves and see what we see. There we go. So what we are seeing is that the hot salty water has been pushed down, the cold fresh water is sitting on top, which tells us that the salt content, the density of the water, is a bigger driver um, of the ocean conveyor than the heat actually is. So where we have glacial meltwater going into the oceans, so you know the, the cycle of Arctic ice melting every year and then refreezing and so on, that is a very important part of the cycle and one of the things that is pushing the ocean conveyor on.